<clears throat> you have your y equals log x here. And the question I simply want to pose to you is, what's that area? I've shaded this area in green. It's an area underneath the curve, just like you normally deal with. Um, how big is this area? Okay. Now, not a trick question. If I were just to think about this as, in as simple terms as I can, it's an area underneath the curve. So I would normally form, for a weird curvy thing like this, I'd normally form an integral. Okay. Now, what integral would I form that would exactly, in one hit, give me this area? Can you tell me what my upper and lower boundaries should be? One to three, very good, because even though I haven't told you, because you know what the function is, you can work out what the x-intercept is over here. That's a one, so therefore you start at one, you end at three, no problems. It's just an area under the curve, so no pi's involved or anything like that, no rotation. What will come next? What's the integrand? It's just log x. That's all you're integrating, and it's with respect to x because it's beneath the curve. That is the integral. That would give you the exact area. There's just one teeny problem, which is that we don't know how to integrate logs. Um, it's very tempting. Like a lot of students will say, oh, I know what to do with this. Um, I know what happens when you have logs. It's 1 over x, right? And then they get a really nice, simple answer. Just happens to be wrong. That's all. What have they done? They have done something we've all done in this class in the last couple of weeks. They have differentiated instead of integrating. And I've even had students come to me and argue. They've said, no, but you can't integrate log x. So this is the only other thing you can do with it. And just forget the fact that it has nothing to do with the answer. So this is a common error. We do not want to do it. But our brain is kind of cornered. What can we do with this if we can't integrate log of x? Now, there's a big fat clue on the board right now. It's the title. What we want to focus on today is about integrating exponential functions and ways that you can use exponential functions and their integrals for areas even like this. There's an exponential function hiding in here. It's not obvious, but the fact that I'm trying to wave a red flag and tell you that it's in there somewhere should make you think, where is there an exponential function hiding in this question? And he takes it to the neuron. What do you see? Up here. The neuro is noticed. This is a log, and a log is just an exponential just viewed from the other angle, right? Two sides of the same coin. I could rewrite this, and I encourage you to rewrite it, as x, change that to be the subject, being equal to, as the neuro said, e to the y. Yeah? It's exactly the same. I've just rewritten it. It's a little bit weird writing x as a function of y rather than the other way around. But this, this is much more useful to me because I'm really good at integrating exponential functions. Logs, not so much. Um, you can actually integrate log functions for extension to students, but it, it hurts your brain when you do it. So I'm going to avoid that delicately and do something that's actually in the two unit and extension one syllabus. How's this going to help me? This is what I want to use over here, right? This is a function of y now. So it won't do much good to be able to integrate that with respect to x because it's a function of y. So what would happen, what area would I get if I took this guy and integrate it with respect to y? Where is it on the board? Yeah, it, when, you different, sorry, when you integrate with respect to x, you bound it, bind? You make an area <laughs> with the x-axis. Does that make sense? If you integrate with respect to y, you make an area with the y-axis. Does that make sense? So here's the y-axis over here. If you've got another color with you, or if you want to, like, I don't know, cross-hatch it in a different way, this over here, that was not a very straight line, this guy over here is the area I will get if I integrate with respect to the y-axis. Does that make sense? Now, it's not the area I want. This is the area I want. But I can get to that area from this one. Yeah? I'm going to need some help before I do that, though. It's an area with respect to the y-axis, so I'm going to need some y-boundaries, yeah? The bottom one's easy. What's the bottom y-boundary? It's still zero. That's convenient. But the upper boundary, I have to work out. How do I work out this value up here? Yeah, I'm going to take in the corresponding x value. It's 3. And since this curve is y equals log x, then this is y equals log 3. So. Now I have a value up there, yeah? So now I'm ready to actually solve my question. I've got all the pieces I need. The area I actually want is equal to 
Now I could go and do like a couple of different equations here and say the orange area is this, the green area is that, but we can do it all in one fell swoop. If I want the green area, but I can find the orange area, what's the, what happens when you put those two together? You, you just get this rectangle, right? What are the dimensions of this rectangle? How wide is it? It's three units across, see that? Zero to three, and how high? It's ln of three, do you see that? So therefore, I can find that rectangle, that's how wide it is, that's how tall it is, and then if I want the green area, I will, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna subtract the orange area. So subtract the orange area that I'm about to find. Is that okay? You just told me the y boundaries from zero to log three. And in here, I'm gonna write the function of y, right? Which you guys told me before, Tanura helped us out. It's e to the y dy. Is that okay? Just before we move on, notice how this is, this, forming this thing was all the hard part, right? You've got y boundaries, you've got a function of y, you're integrating with respect to y, everything works, yeah? Let's evaluate it. 3 log 3 is still hanging out the front, doing not very much at the moment. Take away, what's the primitive of e to the y? It's just e to the y. Oh, I love these exponential functions, they're so nice to deal with, okay? You've got your upper and lower boundaries, 0 to log 3, we're almost there. Subtract, now don't forget, you're about to put everything in here after this minus sign, yeah? So everything gets the minus sign applied. I'm gonna put some big fat brackets here just to remind myself of that, okay? Now I'm gonna do my upper and lower boundaries. Here are the other one, upper ones. e to the log three. Actually, that's it. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Take away, what's the lower boundary? e to the zero. I really didn't need those brackets, did I? Um, there's that double negative in there. Watch out for that because you're gonna expand out in a second. Three to the log three, take away. What's e to the power of log three? That's just three. You see how important all those exponential and log laws that we index and log laws that we learned last year were? So that's just three, done. What about this guy? This is one. There's a double negative there. Here is my answer. Almost, what's it missing? It's, it's an area, so there is my area. How do you feel? When you have a look at the actual calculus of it, the actual integration is the easy part, right? It's all the form, it's like the, the geometric thinking and the formation of this integral, that's the tricky part. And the rest of it just kind of falls out.